Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and today's video is the psychology of Buddhism. So what I want to say today is psychology and Buddhism is quite an interesting topic because Buddhism is a psychology. The idea and the practices of Buddhists are and say something about our psychological nature and our mind and how we think and what we really want most out of life. The first tenet of Buddhism is that life is suffering. It is we suffer because we want something and because we can't have it and because fundamentally uh, we feel the pain of the attachment to things, to the material world, to friends, to family, to uh, all those things, you know, that are floating around around us but are not us. So ultimately Buddhism practices the freeing of self from attachments to things. And in that way I feel Buddhism is a very, very yellow ideology. I feel it's a yellow ideology because it kind of represents the freeing of self from duties and responsibilities. You know, in your mind you have all these feelings of things you must do. People's expectations on you, your employer's demands on you, the ideas that you have about what you should have, what kind of life you should live, what kind of uh, stuff you should buy, what kind of things you need to wear to be liked by other people. So Buddhism says, give up on that. You don't need that. You don't need to think about that. You don't need to want things. Why do you want things to begin with? Why do you want to want things? And this is a very, very difficult life philosophy for a lot of people. I was listening to Alan Watts and he was talking about how people come <laughs> to a school of Buddhism, you know, and they try to learn uh, to free themselves from attachments to things. And then he says, but you're attached to wanting to free yourself from an attachment to material things, and that's an attachment as well. So, in this, I feel um, you cannot force yourself to let go of things. Letting go is not a forced conscious act. It is a free act. It is, uh, and this is a very Zen idea, an act of just letting go. And uh, yeah, it's a very difficult concept to grasp if you're a person that's just not wired that way. Because ultimately, Buddhism is about mindset. I used to think it was like, an, uh, like a goal we were all headed towards. You know, like an ultimate freeing act, you know, the final stage of human evolution, you know, reaching nirvana, reaching that high point. But nowadays I feel it's really just something such as simple as mindset, you know, a way of thinking, a way of approaching life and your experiences. You can have this way and you can have this mindset, you can practice these roads uh, or tenets of Buddhism, no matter where you are, what you do or where you live. And in this I feel everyone who suffers from burdens of expectations and responsibilities need to take a big look at this philosophy. If you are a person that struggles with overwhelm, a person that feels so strongly that I must constantly do things, I must constantly prove my worth to others, I must constantly care for other people, you know, a person that is so like burdened by material desires, personal relationship desires, uh, social expectations, you know, that kind of a person really deeply needs Buddhism as a counterpart to their current lifestyle. And uh, this is because, you know, the stress, you might not even realize it, but the stress, the weight, the expectations kill people, you know. It breaks you down, it wears you down, it slowly tears you apart. And that's why a lot of people ultimately uh, who have lived very stressful lifestyles, more sooner or later start looking into Buddhism, yoga, meditation, mindfulness, you know, all those practices. Now, I said that Buddhism is a kind of yellow mindset because it's a mindset of, you know, it's kind of like the philosophy of a child. You know, imagine a child. A child is carefree <laughs> at their best in a normal state, you know, the ideal picture of the pure child. Uh, as a person who is just carefree, a person that can just laugh, can just enjoy the moment, can just take every day as it comes, a person that can go with the flow, a person that can just live in the moment, can see and participate in life and what is happening. And so Buddhism stands against, you know, the adult, 
the serious figure, the parent, you know, the person that feels the burden of life weighing on them. I cannot participate in life because I am responsible for it. I cannot enjoy life because I need to take responsibility for it. The idea of the adult is I have to control and see and manage life and so I have to distance myself from it. I cannot simply be a part of it. I cannot simply enjoy the present. I cannot simply take the day as it comes. I cannot say kumbaya. <laughs> and there, so I feel Buddhism as a yellow mindset stands against uh, you know, the green mindset of uh, the DISC personality types. And I'm talking DISC here because DISC is such a great model for understanding mindset and mood and emotional states. I said in the beginning that it's hard to break these things. You know, if you're deeply attached to something, it is hard to break away from it. And that means, you know, you cannot simply flip a switch and be done with it. It is very hard to change your mindset. People say and talk about positive thinking, like, oh, just flip the switch, just be positive. But it doesn't work that way. You can't just flip the switch. Mindset is a combination of three things. It is what you tell yourself about the world and about yourself. It is the experiences that you are actually genuinely having. And in this, it is the proof that your mindset is correct and the proof that you have found that your mindset is working. So beyond that, Mindset is not what you tell yourself, but it's also what you believe in. And I think that last third part is the most difficult. I mean, you can change what you tell yourself. You can practice affirmations. And you believe me, I do this. I write and I tell myself affirmations, you know, when I'm struggling with something. An affirmation, a positive message, a story can be very helpful. And I read a lot of stories. And I, evidence can be dealt with. You know, you can change your environment to match your mindset. You can create an environment that will support your mindset and your beliefs. And you can participate in experiences and that will challenge your mindset and will help you, you know, uh, free yourself from a difficult experience or some kind of attachment or struggle you have. But the last part, the belief, that is the most difficult. And if you hit that lesson, that's when things really start to change. And ultimately, I believe belief is not something that we can magically summon. I believe it's something that creeps up on us. It takes a long time, some say 28 days, to change a habit. But I believe it's much, much more. Belief is something that takes, you know, um, a long time and starts to slowly creep up on you. Like, you know, uh, it is, you know, more than just having a story, more than just having uh, had an experience, but it is, you know, repeated stories, repeated experiences that are practiced for such a long time that we forget they are fairy tales. Belief is, you know, when Harry Potter has been read and when Harry Potter as a book has existed for such a long time that people start to think it was the Bible, you know, that, that people start to think about it the way they think about the Bible. Probably never gonna happen, but it could happen. Uh, so, what I'm saying with this video is Buddhism is not necessarily, well, it is a religion, but it is also a psychology and it's a philosophy. And uh, it's a psychology that is for people that struggle from heavy stress, as a lot of people do in this today's society. Um, it is a counterpart to. Um, the serious and heavy and forced and responsible mindset of green people in DISC and it really reflects you know the mindset of a yellow person in DISC it really reflects the mindset of a person that has truly been able to you know let go and uh, in this letting go they have been able to discover and make peace with their inner child at least that's my thoughts let me know if you have any uh, other opinions and of course thanks everyone for watching and see you all in the next video.